Hi, this is Tom Farmer. Now I'm going to show how to do a very simple but regressed salary range structure. To build a pay structure, you need to have the right data. So here's a spreadsheet that has employee data, name, title, grade, function. Some companies do function specific ranges. Other companies will have simple structures where everyone has the same range if you're in the same grade which is what I'm going to show. Of course you need salary. If you have any part-time employees you need to convert their part-time salary to a full-time salary uh, or, or we call it FTE, full-time equivalent salary. Here we have Patterson grade which is a job evaluation method uh, used by many companies. Uh, not as popular in Asia as Mercer IPE or Hay System but it's the same basic type of job evaluation process based on five equally weighted factors um, judgment, accountability, knowledge and skill, impact and complexity and so it results in a banding and a subgrading so here we have band E which is a strategic level role uh, grade subgrade one two three um, there are actually five subgrades for every band down in D, we have D5, D4, D, D3, and uh, D2, D1, etc. Here we have the market values for the jobs. Uh, and I'll just show you briefly how we came up with those market values. We have market data here. This is all fake, just like the employee data. And so the fake survey data has a job code, also has a function, survey title, of course, we don't match by title, we match by description. And then the survey also provides an indication of the level of the job using the Patterson grade as well. For training purposes, I cannot show Mercer or Towers or Hay. I would need their permission. Um, uh, I do have the permission to show Patterson grade actually because it's a public domain system. Um, now, the survey would normally provide annual salary. Most of the published surveys will provide only annual. Here I've converted it to monthly by dividing by 13 months because my fictitious company provides 13 months. And then I've aged the data forward by nine months because the data was collected in the survey in April, but I want to use the structure in the next year, 2018, starting January. So if the country trend is 6%, I want to age or inflate the data forward by nine months. Nine months is three quarters of a year. So instead of using 6%, I'm going to use three quarters of 6%, which is, which is four and a half percent. So I've applied four and a half percent to my raw survey monthly salary and derived an aged market value. All right, here's a worksheet I use for matching. So for every job, I match it to a survey job. So chief financial officer at level E3, I've matched it to the survey job 2001, which is head of finance, level E3. It has a market data of 22,000 per month. So job 2001, I go to the survey matching worksheet 2001, and there we go. So for convenience, I've gone ahead and matched many jobs uh, in advance. Okay, so we can go straight to the survey development. So going to the employees sheet, if I uh, select any cell within this range of data, I can create a pivot table. A pivot table uh, will look at that entire range of data uh, and propose a range. So yes, it has correctly selected the range of data that has all the information I'm going to use. And it proposes a new worksheet, which is OK. So I hit OK, and there's my pivot table. I need to tell what I want my pivot table to show. I want to see grade, so I drag that down as my row header. And I want to see the market values that are aged. By default, it's going to give me a count. Actually, this is a count of the people. It's a count of how many rows there are in each grade. 
for example, in grade 12, there are 11 people. Um, I don't want count of people. I want to see the average market value. So I'm going to modify this within the pivot table. Um, I'm going to change the number format as well. I don't need any decimals, and I like to see commas. So there we go. I have my market data. And I'm going to copy and paste this data as values because it's easier to work with flat numbers instead of a pivot table where there's a lot of underlying code and formulas. So here's what I've got. I'm going to use grade and market salary to develop a range structure, a salary range structure. Okay, so there's my basic data. And I want to build minimum, midpoint, and max to build a salary structure. But I want to smooth the data because one thing I can already see here is the midpoint differential is going to be quite bumpy. Okay, let's insert a couple of rows and look at the, the differential from one to the next. So going from grade six to grade seven is rising by, actually dropping by 3%. But from grade seven to grade eight, it goes up by 22%. Going grade eight to grade nine goes 14% and so on. So these numbers are very inconsistent. <clears throat> so when you build a salary range structure, often you want a smooth progression of midpoints. This way, a promotion can be 8%, 10%, 12%, regardless of what grade you're coming from and going to. Okay, so it's aesthetically more consistent. Uh, it reflects the fact that any job and a job in the next grade, the job in the next grade is bigger and the midpoint should be bigger. <clears throat> okay, so if we want to regress those numbers there's a very simple tool in Excel which allows you to do that. So let's take these numbers and put them over here for now. So let's say I want to build midpoints, but I want to regress them so they're smooth and have a smooth midpoint differential. So if I copy this formula and put it here, um, I change the reference from here to here and here to here. Okay. So I want these to be smooth. How do I do that? Okay, one way I can simply highlight these numbers and then use this little function up here called fill series growth trend. Hit OK. All right, now all those numbers just changed. And notice that the midpoint differential is now 27% all the way up. Okay, so if I were to develop um, uh, mid minimum and midpoint and max, and I say 1.2 like that, and I say this is equal to this times 0.8, and I hit F4 to lock that in, take away the decimals, copy it down, and then create maximum equals the midpoint times 1.2 hit my F4 so I can copy it down take away the decimals first okay so there's my range and now when I graph it of course I could round the numbers if I like but for now let me just graph this using a line chart and you'll see that the numbers are nice and smooth if I did not regress those numbers, sorry, they would have looked something like this, which we did last time. But by regressing, you have a smooth midpoint progression, especially if I add my, whoops, add my up-down bars. I have to take away the grade series here first. Remove that, 
change my x-axis labels like that. Okay, now I can add up-down bars and they look like salary ranges. Okay, so that's how you build a simple regressed salary range structure. The pros is that you have uh, a very smooth structure. Every promotion would come with a pay increase regardless of the combination of grades. Uh, the growth from one grade to the next is consistent. The disadvantage or the con is that the market values are no longer directly a reflection of the underlying market value. So for example, grade 11, the market value for the people in that grade is 4,000. But the midpoint here is 4,300. It's a little high. So that midpoint is a little higher than the actual market value. Okay, and so on. In fact, in grade 12, it's even more dramatic. Here in grade 12, the market values are 7,019. And yet the midpoint is only 5,484. Okay, in my other version, the midpoint is 7,000, which is a reflection of the market value of 7,019. It's very accurate to the market. But if I want to regress my midpoints, it looks nice, but the midpoints are not necessarily as accurate as a result of regression. Okay, so there you go. That's how you can build a regressed, very simple salary structure.